one of the most wretched haunted house stories is from the year 1912. And what makes the story so wretched is that the story is true. On June 10th, 1912, Josiah and Sarah Moore were stabbed to death inside of their home in Velasca, Iowa. It was just like any night, and both Sarah and Josiah were in the house with their four children and two friends who were spending the night. Unfortunately, they were all killed. To this day, the crime remains a mystery. Nobody really knows who killed them, what killed them, and why. Were they just a random target, or was there some reason? No matter what reason, there was no justifying the horrible murders that took place inside the Moore home on that horrifying night back in June 10th, 1912. The Moore's home is considered to be one of the most haunted houses in the United States of America. But just like most paranormal experiences that happened in certain places and murders and hauntings, there are always certain people drawn to them places. People pay $400 to stay for one night inside the Moore home. There have been paranormal tours, but they have been cut short by children's voices, falling lamps, moving ladders and flying objects, says the Velisca Axe Murder House website. One of the worst events that had happened in the house since the murders was when a paranormal investigator stabbed himself after spending the night. As the Velisca Axe Murder House website states, skeptics have left believers. Hello, my name is Frank. I have a story to tell you about what happened to me one Halloween night. Halloween is one of my favourite times of the year. I love the costumes, the spooky stories told about it and the horror movies on TV etc. But most of all I love trick or treating. One Halloween night stood out much more than any other one. So let me tell you what happened that very, very scary Halloween night while me and my friends were trick-or-treating. Me and my friends were just chilling in my house on Halloween, playing computer games. We were enjoying playing the games, but decided we needed more fun, so wanted to go trick-or-treating. The problem was we had no costumes but we had enough pocket money between us to buy something cheap in the store. We bought our costumes and decided to trick or treat around my friend's neighborhood. There surprisingly wasn't that many other trick or treaters on the street. We took this as a good thing because it could have meant more candy for us, hopefully. We knocked on one door and a nice lady greeted us with a smile and gave us lots of candy. I was so happy we decided to go trick or treating after all. When we came to the end of the street, there was this really creepy old house that my friends dared me to go knock on. I didn't want to appear a scaredy cat, so I walked up to the door and knocked on it. I could hear something from inside, and then the door opened a little bit, and as I could hear it, it reminded me of a horror movie as I could hear the door creak. There were cobwebs all over the hall and I thought wow they sure went overboard for Halloween. Then I got a start when I saw a black figure. They seemed to have some really creepy outfit on. They said in a weird voice, I have lots of candy. You and your friends come in and dig in. I have lots of candy. 
you and your friends come in and dig in. I found it so weird, I just turned around and ran. My friends laughed at me and said, jeez, did you see a ghost or something? I told them, that person living there is so weird, they were asking me to get all of you to come in and eat candy. They looked strangely at me. I wondered why. One of my friends said, I thought you didn't know that story. I asked you before did you hear any stories about any house in my neighborhood and you told me no. I said, what story? My friend said, you're kidding about someone being inside there, right? I said, no, of course not. I saw them and heard them. My friend said, that house has been abandoned for years. Legend has it that a group of kids trick-or-treating one night were asked to eat candy at the door and they were all poisoned. It was a nice summer's night in July, and Adam was walking down a nice quiet country road near his house when he suddenly heard a noise. He stopped and tried to see where it was coming from. Suddenly he spotted an elderly woman right in front of him. He wondered how he hadn't seen her before. Adam asked, are you okay? The lady spoke. I am so sad, young man. You see, my husband died just last week, and I miss him so much. We were so united, and him dying has left me with such a void. I sometimes wake up thinking he is standing at the bottom of my bed, smiling, but then he just fades away. Oh, I'm sorry to be loading all my problems on you, young man. Adam said, are you sure you're okay to get home? If you like, I can walk with you. And don't worry, I don't mind hearing people's problems. Also, I am so sorry to hear about your husband. Is there any way I can help you in anything? The lady smiled a warm smile at Adam and said, Oh dear no, young man, I'm okay. I'm just a silly old woman, but if you like, you can walk me home. I just live down the road. Adam and the lady walked down the road, and about ten minutes later, they came to a house, which was the lady's. The lady said, Oh my dear lord, I forgot to even tell you, my name is Mary, would you like to come in for a cup of tea or coffee? It would really cheer me up to have someone to talk to me all alone in this house, I feel like the walls are closing in around me. Adam agreed and said he would love a cup of tea, and when he walked into the kitchen, he got a start thinking that there was no one in the house because that is what the lady had just told him. But he saw a man standing right in front of him with a toolbox beside him. Suddenly the man said, Okay, here's the deal. You have pieces of wood right here, and I'll give you tools. To you make your own coffin, and if you don't continue to make it, then I'm going to shoot you in different areas. The first will be your foot, the second will be your knee, the third your stomach, the fourth, well, you get my drift. Adam froze in fear. Ten minutes later, Adam had made the coffin, worried what was going to happen next, hoping the worst wouldn't have to happen, where the man would shoot him and put him in the box. Adam said to Mary's husband, I'm not going to get in any coffin, so you might as well shoot me in the head right now. The man was shouting, and about a minute later couldn't take any more and lifted his gun to Adam's head and pulled the trigger. The gun made a clicking sound, and the man cursed himself. There were no bullets in it. Mary stood in fear as Adam took out a gun from his pocket and shot her husband. Adam turned to Mary. Okay, lady, where's my money? Mary gave him the money. She promised Adam for killing her husband. She couldn't deal with her serial killer husband any more, bringing back innocent people to the house to build their own coffin or be tortured. Tim lives 
lives in a country town in Texas and loves driving his pickup truck, but for years and years he knew not to stop outside this certain cornfield. The field seemed to stretch for miles and miles and he dreaded the day he would run out of fuel if he had no choice in the matter to stop. When he drove past the cornfield, he tried not to look into it, as if that would stop anything strange from happening. But he knew that if he didn't stop, then nothing should happen. The worst about this story is no one said actually what would happen if you did stop. But his imagination was running wild any time he had to drive past it. There were a few stories about the field and different things happening different folk, but he didn't really dwell on them and pretended at least to not believe them. But one night during October, he had to make a pickup for his job and had to drive past the field. He no doubt wasn't looking forward to it, but it was his job, his livelihood. He had the gas checked and it was full, so there would be no problem there. While he was driving his pickup truck past the cornfield, he noticed something up ahead. He hoped it was nothing sinister, as he drove closer he realised there was a car crashed on the road with three people lying in pools of blood near it. But when he looked out the window, he realised one person was alive looking up at him, no doubt pleading with him to stop and help them. He felt awful passing the person and others, but knew he couldn't stop. He didn't want to stop, so he drove on. As he looked in the truck mirror, he could see the three people standing on the road, looking at his truck. He froze in fear and pressed the gas pedal and drove faster and faster, but the cornfield seemed to go on and on even more than usual. Then all of a sudden, it was like dead people walked out of the cornfield and stood right in front of him on the road. He decided to drive past them, there was no way he was stopping. Then suddenly there was a knock on Tim's door, which woke him out of his dream. When he answered the door, the sheriff was standing on the doorstep and said, I'm very sorry to break this news to you Tim, but your daughter unfortunately has been involved in a car accident out by the cornfield. I'm very sorry but she didn't make it, and two of her friends were in the car also. One has survived. Tim couldn't believe what he was hearing and was in a daze. The sheriff said, Tim, are you okay? Tim was wondering was this still a dream? Then he felt drowsy and looked up. He was still on the road, near the cornfield. He checked the mirror and looked behind him, hoping this was still a dream. He walked back to see who the dead people on the road were. And he looked down at himself, his daughter, and his daughter's friend. He then realized he was dead.